Research tells us that you make an opinion about somebody within the first 30 seconds of you meeting them. A recent TED article actually states that you make a judgment about a TED or TEDx speaker within the first seven seconds <laughs> of them arriving on stage, which is kind of scary because you're all staring at me right now. <laughs> My passion is photography. I love every part of it, from the concept of creating a photograph to processing the film to being in the darkroom. I love every part of it. One of the main reasons that I became a photographer is because I hate having my photograph taken. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. And with today's technology, it's getting harder and harder to avoid being in the camera spotlight with smartphones. As a photographer, I tell stories. And through this, I've done a lot of research. Most of the research has been about how and why women alter their bodies to be more aesthetically pleasing, to be more attractive. Who decides how beautiful we are? Who decides what we should change or modify? In every society, there are different ways that you can modify yourself. It is embedded in each of society or cultures around the world. In Asia, the number one medical procedure, cosmetic procedure for people of Asian descent is the double eyelid uh, procedure where they cut the eyelid to create a second eyelid or they cut the edge of the eye to widen the eyes. We may think that this is not great, but it's, it's part of the society. Uh, people I've asked about it have said it's just normal. It's just a rites of passage. It's nothing different. In different societies, they show their heritage and their rituals by the things that they do. These are the Kayan women who are in Burma, and they wear brass coils around their necks so that they can be part of their community. Imagine the pride they feel. Think of their place in their community. We may not agree with what other cultures do, but it actually does make us different, individual, and we should celebrate those differences. Attraction. What attracts one person does not attract another, which is a good thing. But it's sometimes you'll actually look at somebody who is wafer thin or is a voluptuous lady, and those are two different looks, but they could be attractive to different people. The number one global surgery is breast augmentation, breast enlargement, with over 1.75 million breast enlargements done last year. Enhancement. There are different ways to enhance the female anatomy. These women in South Africa take yodi pills. These are the same pills that are taken by chickens to enhance their breasts, to make juicier, more succulent thighs. But that is what is considered attractive for that society. Something that is becoming more common these days is uh, body modification to female genitals. What has been hyped as designer vaginas. With the uh, media talking more about pornography, pornography being more ac uh, accessible, women are opting for surgeries that can wax, nip, and tuck their genitalia to be more aesthetically pleasing, to be more attractive. Women wear high heel shoes to make themselves more feminine, to gain more power. And currently, there is a whole load of different foot facelifts that you can actually have done. The most common one is called a toe tuck, or what is known as a Cinderella procedure 
where the bone of the small toe is shaved so that a woman can wear more pointy shoes. Or Botox is injected into the pads of the feet so that high heels can be worn for longer. Or the middle toe is shortened so that the feet are now become symmetrical and beautiful. What do these all have in common? They're all different ways that women will change themselves, modify themselves to be aesthetically pleasing, to be more attractive, to find a mate, to have a better life, to have a future, to find love. They do it in every single society. We all make judgments. We're all critical. We make judgments about other people. We make judgments about ourselves, and we can be very critical about our own flaws. This woman is part of my project, Living History. She thinks, because she is older now, she is no longer attractive. She is no longer beautiful because she has wrinkles. For the past eight years, I have been photographing and documenting the last remaining women in China with bound feet. The majority of people, when they hear about bound feet, think that that's a barbaric practice. Thank God that has stopped. They don't want to look at my photographs. But what you have to think is that this was normal in their society at that time. They conceded, they conceded to the norms of their society, just as we concede to norms today. So although we may not agree with it, it is part of a community or a culture. They did this so that they could have a better life, a better future. I believe it is with pride when they tell me that their feet were smaller, they were more beautifully formed, and now with age, 50, 60 years, this is their feet have spread out. This woman is the first woman that I photographed in 2005. Zhang Yongying had beautifully small feet. I held her foot in my hand and it was so soft and well-formed, I think it was with empathy that I realized how much what she had been through, that even though she'd had a difficult, harsh life, that this is something that she achieved, that was the norm in her society. We all conform to a certain degree. We believe we know what is right from wrong. We are taught from when we are young what is acceptable and expected from us. This woman, Su Shi Rong, she was known as the most beautiful woman in her village because she had the smallest, perfectly formed bound feet. She told me that because of feudal traditions, if you did not have your feet bound, you would not get married. We all want some harmony in our lives, and we quite often will do that uh, just by conforming to society and what is around us. This woman, Sun Bao Rong, she was not forced to have her feet bound. At the age of seven, she chose to bind her own feet because she didn't want to be left out. She wanted to fit in. She wanted a better future. She wanted to be part of her society. So in every culture, they do different things to actually change themselves to be more beautiful. It, you, beauty used to be about individual cultures. Today, it's becoming more standardized globally by the media, by um, the press, by the internet. What I want you to think about is your heritage. Think about its traditions and its cultures. Think of be proud of who you are, be proud of your individualism, be proud of your own beauty. Thank you. Mm -hmm.